and welcome to Quote of the Week. In this episode, we're going to be looking at Shakespeare's use of language in The Tragedy of Macbeth. Today, we're going to be focusing on a very famous quote from the opening act of the play, which is, fair is foul, and foul is fair. In your exams, you'll be expected to explore the writer's use of language, commenting on the effects of techniques, key words, context, and the impact on the audience. To practice these skills, I'm now going to give you 60 seconds to write as much as you possibly can about the quote. You should focus on the writer's methods and devices, key words that stand out to you, the playwright's possible intentions, how an audience might be impacted, and what we can learn about life at the time. So get your pens and paper ready and let's see how effectively you can analyse Shakespeare's language. Okay, hopefully during the last minute or so you were able to identify some of the techniques that you can see before you now. Firstly, you can see that the statement uttered by the witches is a paradoxical statement that seems to defy logic. This introduces the theme of the supernatural. We can tell that this is an example of foreshadowing as it ominously predicts the fact that heroic characters like Macbeth will become corrupted. We can see symbolism in the statement as it implies that appearances can be deceptive and we can also see repetition and fricative alliteration. Finally, we can see antimetabole, which means to reverse a phrase that has been previously stated. Don't worry if you weren't able to identify every technique that Shakespeare has employed, because what really matters in the exam is how well you can dig into language and explore layers of meaning. Here are a few ideas for how the text could be analysed. The use of this paradoxical statement immediately introduces the theme of the supernatural into the story, which would have terrified an audience in Jacobean times. The fact that the word foul is repeated immediately establishes the villainous nature of the witches and lets us know that they're going to be antagonists in the story. The F sound arising from the fricative alliteration generates a spiteful and vicious tone which shows us that these creatures are vindictive in nature. The weird sisters chant in unison, highlighting their unified desire to subvert and corrupt. And finally, the trochaic structure of the witch's speech stands in opposition to the typical use of iambic pentameter in the play and once again creates a sense of otherness. Here are some examples of vocabulary that you could use in an essay relating to this quotation. And finally, here are some questions to think about related to the quote, along with an exemplar paragraph for how the quote could be analysed in an exam scenario. Feel free to pause the video and look upon these questions at your own leisure. See you for the next episode. Bye!